apps typically have their own storage. They're using Facebook's API to ask for your data, and then they take it and process it and store it. And they probably conform to their country's data storage laws, but um, Facebook's not keeping that information. You've given it to a company for them to take away. Yeah, and that's why you have to contact those companies and say, please delete my data. We actually give away a lot of data without really thinking about it. And this has come up in the news recently because there's a company, Cambridge Analytica, who've used some data from an app that was built by a professor at a university for a research reason, and then the data's been passed on and on and on. It is interesting to talk about how apps uh, offer your data around, or when, the, when people build an app, what do they want from you? Uh, and why did they build it was the biggest question, because there's normally a reason they built these apps. How easy is it to make all these apps? Is it, is it a complicated process? It's, it's pretty super easy. They've got example code snippets on Facebook's developer site. You pretty much copy and paste those lines of code in and then change what you do after you get the permission. They've basically built a framework that makes it easy for you to ask for types of data uh, and then uh, to get permissions from user for that type of data without having to do much coding. So first of all, I'll say there's two major types of situation that we tend to get into. One is where you've used Facebook to log into another website. And actually, yeah, we should acknowledge we're not just talking about Facebook here. The most social media platforms have one of these APIs to log in with Twitter, log in with Google. And, and that's a common thing that a lot of us do because it makes everything super convenient. The other type of way we do this is that we install these kind of fun little apps, like a little quiz to know how much we know about kittens, or a little app which gives you a tag cloud of the most commonly used words you use in all of your posts, or which celebrity do you look most like, and then it takes your Facebook picture and then merges it with a celebrity and says you look a little bit like some celebrity that you want to look like. <laughs> but in order to do those things, like generate a word cloud of your posts, or to take your Facebook image and merge it with a celebrity, they have to ask for information about you or get access to your data. Uh, and we should think a little bit about why they did that. And that's probably the question we should ask ourselves more and haven't done a lot of the time. Why would someone want to build an app which creates a tag cloud of all of your posts? Um, they might be interested in analyzing lots of posts to know what sort of things people talk about. And so they, they then want a reason for you to give them the posts. <laughs> like you wouldn't say, yeah, sure, I'll give my data to that company. They to that company, they go, well, why would someone want to give us all of the posts? We could generate a word cloud for them. And that would be a nice thing that they would get benefit from and we would get benefit from. Are they upfront about what they're doing with your data? They should be. And they have to be more upfront about it now. Uh, in 2014, Facebook added a kind of re permissions request uh, process for review. So now when you write an app and submit it, they then look at why did you ask for the data, what do you intend to use it for. Uh, but then after you've said yes, it then goes on to how trustworthy they are as a company. So they, they might have very well said why they wanted to access it. And it might be that when it pops up and asks for permission, it says we want to use this data. Uh, here's a link to why. Um, but most people like all terms and conditions just sort of say, yeah, yeah, sure, so go ahead. And actually it's very scary to see what Facebook thinks you like. Uh, I had a quick look on the things it gives me adverts for, and it was alcohol, parenting, and animals. So <laughs> in that order as well. So I'm obviously tweeting too much about uh, the wine bar that we like. Once you've given that permission, is that in perpetuity then? Is that forever, or is that just up to now? That's, uh, so it, it varies a little bit about what you give it permission for, and whether you give it historical information about all of your posts or just the things you currently like. Um, but then once they've got that, they're then bound by data laws, which we're not going to go too far into in this. Um, but they should, if you ask them to, uh, delete your data, which is partly where this question came from in the current news topic. Um, but really, once you've given it to them, you have to proactively ask them to delete it. So when they write an app like that, uh, they have to request using the sample lines of code to access certain types of data. And one thing that's a little bit scary is that um, anything that's public about you, they don't need reviewed by Facebook. So uh, your public profile, they can, anybody can create an app which will access your public profile and you can say yes and install it to and Facebook doesn't check it because it's just accessing the public information that 
you have public on Facebook? There's a few things I've learned. I've learned that there's a whole lot of apps I did not know I gave my data to, so I've at some point just stepped over this in order to do it. There's, there's random ones like Piggy Share. I don't really know what Piggy Share does, but for some reason it knows all of my friends, it knows all of my posts, and it's looked at them. Some of them I, I definitely use for a good reason, like Spotify I have in there, and I want it to be there because uh, it somehow interacts with my social interest in music. And actually what you can do is if you go to settings and then in the settings section go to apps, you can see every single app that you've given permission to, what information you've given it and whether or not you're allowing it to post and if it is posting, who can see those posts, whether it's your friends, everybody or just you. And you can edit all of those things. So you can now go back and say, actually, I don't want you to see this information. So if that's information that's not yet happened, like the things you will like over the next few weeks, you can from this point stop those apps seeing that information in the future. However, if you delete an app or take away permissions, Facebook then clearly says to you, we've taken away permission from this app to use that data or see that data. But it's up to you to ask that company to delete your information. Facebook has no control to make that company necessarily delete it. It says you have to do it. So you have to find the people who created the app, contact them and say, please delete what you have about me, which is a, a scary situation you find yourself in where you realize you have to manually contact 30 companies to say, you've got information about me, which I don't really want you to have anymore. Please delete it. And then you just have to hope those companies conform to data protection laws and then will delete it. Is that country reliant though? I mean, might they freely ignore you because they're based somewhere else? Uh, probably. Yeah, I should, that's, that's another computer file video on privacy law, I think. The scariest thing is probably that when an app asks for your information, uh, Facebook allows uh, you to give away what you know about other people to the app to prove your experience of the app. So it might say, we want information about all of your friends. And so there's a section on there, which was the scariest thing I found um, for me. And I guess I kind of knew this, but it's interesting to see it now. It's a setting that you can control if it's not too late. <laughs> it's too late for all the things that people, have, that your friends have given away about you so far. But you can say, uh, I will let my friends give information about me to other apps for this type of information. Your religious views, your birthdays, your family and relationships, what things you like, that type of information, which you allow all of your friends to see and therefore you allow your friends to give that information to other apps. And so while you log into Facebook, you can see a list of all of the apps you've installed and what data you've given them. You can't see a list of all of the apps that your friends have given your data to, and you don't know what data that necessarily is or what they've asked for. But yes, maybe someone that you're closely friends with has, uh, who's got access to pretty much an unvetted version of your Facebook uh, has maybe given away lots of aspects of your data to other companies. So one thing you can do right now if you want to stop this happening more is you can go into settings and then the apps bit of the settings and apps others use is what it's called. There's a checkbox list of all the things that you allow apps that other people use to see about you. Uh, and you can go straight away and untick all of those. It might be that you become not included in their who are your 10 closest friends type apps, but, uh, but maybe you feel better about having protected your data. It's the kind of thing you should do every few months is review what you've purposefully or accidentally given information to and whether you want to re-restrict that. And hopefully those companies then abide by removal laws effectively. Um, but we need a whole other computer file video on privacy laws probably. Thrust out or FIFO is something that programmers and communications engineers understand very, very well. So we went and wrote some software which does a FIFO tent of the blockchain. And so whenever coins are stolen and put in a transaction, perhaps